So Google, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and now apparently Twitter have deplatformed Alex Jones. And haven't the right-wing conservative free speech brigade gone and absolutely lost their shit over it? Sargon of Akkad released a video when the news first broke entitled First They Came for Alex Jones, basically a play on the Martin Niemöller poem First They Came for the Communists, and he was quickly followed by a host of others, all screaming the sky was falling and that soon they all could or would be stripped of their right of free speech along with all their other various rights and freedoms. Basically the slippery slope argument. Right about now I would have to say that Sargon would make his nemesis Anita Sarkeesian proud by the way he has been playing the victim card of late. But has Jones been denied his right of free speech by Google, Apple, YouTube, Spotify or Twitter? I would have to say my answer is no. He most certainly has not and here is why. Firstly, Jones is an American and his free speech rights come from and are protected by the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution which reads as Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion, prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of the people peacefully to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. In the context of the Jones case, we need to focus on two parts of the amendment. The first is the opening statement that Congress, aka the government, shall make no laws respecting, and the section about abridging, meaning curtailing or denying, a person's freedom of speech or that of the press. What this basically means is that you have the right and freedom to criticize your government without fear of reprisals or censorship, and to hold said government accountable for its actions. Simply put, your right of free speech is a political right. However, many people believe that the right of free speech means you can say anything you like, when you want, and however you want, without fear of repercussions or responsibility. And in this belief, they cannot be more wrong. Your right of free speech does not promise that you are completely free from suffering any and all consequences from what you have said under certain well-defined circumstances. Every nation that allows for free speech has placed restrictions upon that right in one form or another. Even in the US, which arguably has some of the loosest free speech laws going, these restrictions often include laws against libel or slander, sedition, treason, calls for violence against private or public institutions or persons, and in some nations, hate speech. If you say something in public that is either libelous or slanderous against a public figure, that figure can sue you for damages. The same holds true if you advocate sedition, treason, or violence against the state or a identifiable group of people. Then you could and should be arrested and charged by the appropriate authorities. The same holds true for those nations that have enacted anti-hate speech laws. Like it or not, one's right of free speech comes with responsibilities and your right of free speech cannot nor should not shield you for the consequences of any and all inappropriate actions or words on your part. Okay, but what about his right of free expression under Article 19 of the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which reads, everybody has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. The right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek receive and impart information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers. While it could possibly be argued that perhaps Jones' right to free expression under Article 19 may have been somewhat impinged by his deplatforming, it should be noted that there are no mechanisms in place to enforce compliance with either the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights in general or Article 19 in particular. Even the US Supreme Court has acknowledged that the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights are not the law of the land in the US even though the U.S. was one of the main drafters and early signatories of the Declaration at the end of World War II. The thing is, there is nothing in the wording of either the U.S. First Amendment nor Article 19 that forces or states that any private individual or organization which provides or runs a public for profit media service such as newspapers, TVs, radio stations, or the new alternative social media sources must lend their platforms to one and all regardless of the content of said sources. Take newspapers for example. Most have op-ed pages where they encourage the public to write into the editor. However, they may only publish letters that generally favor their own political bias, while publishing a scattering of opposing letters in order to preserve the illusion of fairness and balance. Cable networks such as Fox News and CNN do this as well, and there's absolutely nothing in either the First Amendment or Article 19 to stop them from doing so. Now, in the case of YouTube, Google, Apple, Spotify, as well as Twitter, they do not produce content per se, but are dependent on private content creators such as myself and yes, Alex Jones to provide them with material that they can make ad revenue off of. These firms are 
publicly traded private companies who offer access to their various social media platforms to the general public and whose only real duty is to ensure that nothing negatively impacts upon their ability to generate the maximum amount of return or profit for the shareholders. They also have to be very mindful of their brand's reputation. As stated before, there is nothing in the wording of either the U.S. First Amendment nor Article 19 that forces private companies to provide open and unregulated access to their platforms. Indeed, they have every right to deplatform any individual who violates the agreement they freely entered into with the service provider when they agreed to their terms of service. Also, under the First Amendment, the right of the people to peacefully assemble, also known as the right of association, protects these firms' right to disassociate with and deplatform any individual or group whose content and views can bring the service provider's brands into disrepute. And this is why these companies deplatform Jones. He was found to be acting contrary to their terms of service, terms which Jones' own website mirrors. They also believe that having their brands associated with Jones and his views created a negative image for their brand name and was doing harm to them. And so they acted, as was their right to do so. So to conclude, was Alex Jones' right of free speech impeded or taken away from him when YouTube, Google, Apple, Spotify, and Twitter deplatformed him? No, because A. The government did not enact any laws or launch any legal actions against him or his First Amendment rights. B. There are no laws or requirements under either the U.S. Constitution First Amendment or Article 19 that demand private companies provide a platform to those who are either in violation of the terms of service of said platform or have the potential to cause harm and a negative impact to those firms' brand names and their profitability. C. Alex Jones' own website is still up and active, and its radio show is still being broadcast on over 90 AM and FM stations throughout the U.S. on the Genesis Communication Network. D. There is nothing stopping Jones and his supporters from funding and creating their own multimedia platform. So is short. Jones's right of free speech has not been removed or attacked. However, since beginning the script for this video, Donald Trump has come out and said that it is dangerous for social medias to self-regulate, hinting that perhaps the government should take control and regulate such companies. If anything, this should put the fear of God into the so-called free speech warriors on both the left and right, as this is a direct threat to both a person's and a private company's right of both free speech and free association. I wonder, will Sargon and his friends address this, or will they stay silent? Anyways, that's it for this video. I am working on a few more and hope to have them up shortly. In the meantime, please like, share, comment, and as always, my comment sections are open and unmoderated. So please feel free to exercise your right of free speech and say what you will. You will not be censored. Ridiculed, mocked possibly, but not censored. And please subscribe. I'm so close to 100 subs, I can taste it. Take care and have a good day.